Ahoy hoy, I'm Planet Walk, and someone who I'm sure you're all familiar with is someone called Level Earth Observer. And one of the things that strikes me about him is that he spends a lot of time going through footage from the International Space Station. Not even people that have an interest in space spend as much time as LEO does combing through footage from the ISS. But what LEO will do is he'll go through footage from the ISS trying to find that one small detail which he thinks shows that the ISS is fake, ignoring all the other details that show that he's wrong. Now recently he posted a video titled Who Still Thinks the International Space Station is Real? and I don't know, maybe anyone that has seen you try to debunk it and seen how bad you are at debunking it. But seriously though, every time I see a video from LEO that supposedly debunks the ISS, it's not that difficult to figure out what LEO is misunderstanding there. Now, just like I did last week, I'm going to use this citation from the United States Air Force to highlight the absurdity of the International Space Station. Oh, I think this is going to be a new argument. What is he going to misapply here this time? If by instance they were flying at the altitudes that they fly at and they would open their helmet up to like scratch their nose, if at that instant they were to lose cabin pressure, the blood in their body would instantaneously boil and be instantaneous death. So we have our pilots, we tell them once they close down, do not open until they land. Sensible advice. And as our friend has just stated here, the reason the U2 pilots wear their spacesuits is if they were to lose cabin pressure at high altitude and they didn't have their, their spacesuit on, their blood would boil instantly, okay? Okay, so is Elio just going to ignore the fact that what he's brought up there shows that one of the flat earth points is wrong? Not only is one of the flat earth points wrong, one of the points that Elio constantly brings up is wrong. You see, one of the ideas that Elio constantly repeats is this idea that you cannot have gas pressure next to a vacuum. This is because according to Flat Earthers, the gas would just expand to fill all the available space and thus we can't have an atmosphere unless there is a container. Now the reason why someone's blood might boil if they lose cabin pressure is because a lower amount of pressure lowers the boiling point of liquids. Now what this means is it means that the height that the U-2 aircraft fly at has a much lower pressure than here on the surface of Earth. So this means that the atmosphere isn't expanding to fill all the available space because it turns out that there's a lot of available space where there's low pressure, just not a lot of atmosphere there. As per usual, that is just something that has gone completely over Elio's head. Now I'm gonna let the NASA legend Don Petty highlight the absurdity of the space station for all to see. Fresh off the back of the citation from the United States Air Force. Take it away, Don. So you have a whole series of O-rings in here and a shaft that you rotate. So, I mean, like on the space station, how many of these would you have? Uh, seven, because we have seven windows. What happens if you get a leak on that? Um, then you have a leak. Look at his face. Look at his face. Bearing in mind, the U-2 pilot is several hundred miles supposedly below these people on the space station and if he had a leak his blood would boil which is why he has strict procedures of course one of them is wearing the suit okay elio you do realize that there is a difference between a cabin losing pressure and a leak right if a leak happens it doesn't mean that you instantly lose pressure you do have some time to try and fix the leak so really this is elio just not realizing how two things that are different can be different and it would seem this legend from NASA doesn't have a Scooby-Doo clue what to do to fix it. Despite the fact, from a citation of the United States Air Force, from what they've told us, these people would die instantly. I mean, Elio, if you're right and they would die instantly, it's not like they can do anything about it. I mean, what are you gonna do once you've instantly died? <laughs> oh yeah, I'm just going to puppeteer my corpse to fix that leak so I don't die again. So Elio is basically fractally wrong here. Even if he were right, he would still be wrong. You'd have procedures that would save your life under these circumstances drilled into you where it would be second nature. So you'd act like that, should you have issues. But if you have a leak, 
you have a leak. Well, he didn't say that he didn't know what to do. He just said that you have a leak. It's not like his life would be in danger just because they asked him that question. It is okay for people to have a laid back response to a question. Sometimes they don't want to have to explain all the procedures, which sometimes can take a long time, especially if the procedures happen to be second nature. In that case, you just do them without even thinking. I know in my case, when something becomes second nature, it becomes a lot easier to do it than it becomes to explain it. You just have a leak. And, and, and what you would do you is... lose air. Yeah, you would probably seal the whole cupola off. Probably. He doesn't have a clue what the procedures are. How obvious do these people need to make it for you? Elio, you do realise that there can be multiple procedures for the same thing depending on how that thing happens. Right? Maybe one of the ways to fix the leak is to just shut something a bit tighter. But if you've shut everything as tight as it can be, that's not the way to fix the leak. Maybe the procedure varies depending on where people are in the craft. The user probably indicates that that is the most likely thing that would be done. Not that it would definitely be done or would be the only thing that would be done. The United States Air Force is rubbish to space anyway with their citation from the spy plane. Well, no, it hasn't rubbished space. You've just got too much space in your head, Elio, to realize that it rubbishes flat Earth. And then uh, there's probably a plan. I don't know off the top of my head, but there's probably a plan for... The fact you don't know the plan off the top of your head really exposes you for the pantomime star that you really are. Okay, so I spent a bit of time trying to figure out when this video was taken, and it was a little bit tricky because Elio didn't leave a link or anything. But I did find it, and it is from 2015. Dom Pettit's last space mission, however, was in 2012. This means that between his last space mission and this video being taken, there was three years. Do you know how easy it is to forget something in three years? It's actually very easy. If you don't do something for a while, it can take a bit of time to remember how it's supposed to be done even if doing it used to be second nature to you. That is why I get a bit concerned if I haven't done any programming in a while, because that is a skill that I want to make sure that I keep and maintain. You're not a spaceman in any shape or form. You're a pantomime character that acts up for naive individuals so you can tickle their delusional hotspot and make them feel like reality is exactly the opposite to what can be tested and verified by all. Elio, you literally described yourself right there. Like, even if Elio is right about the shape of the Earth, it still applies to him because he says the things that are verifiably and demonstrably wrong. As I said earlier, even if Elio was right, he would still be wrong. So my question is, how can you operate a lid on the outside of the space station by manipulating something mechanical on the inside of the space station without losing air pressure. It's, it's called real good engineering. Shocking, Don. Look at his face. <laughs> Even though he's a liar, a fraudster, a pantomime star, <laughs> I can't help but like him. He is the gift that keeps giving, and so is the United States Air Force. Thank you very much, guys, for highlighting how ridiculous the space station is. Wait, so Elio isn't even going to try and explain what Don said that was wrong there. He's just going, ha ha, look at how ridiculous this is. I mean, there's nothing wrong with doing that. It just helps if you actually explain what your problem is. Otherwise, you're not actually giving people a reason to believe that what they're seeing is actually ridiculous. You can't have these double standards. You just can't. Do you mean like the double standard of you being a demonstrable realist who follows the evidence, yet you don't actually accept the evidence when you're shown to be wrong? We know one's real, the United States Air Force. It's been um, verified time and time again. But this silly pantomime known as the International Space Station, can't be verified other than looking up and seeing something fly across the sky. That doesn't mean there's a space station orbiting a scientifically impossible ball in a vacuum. Of course it doesn't. It just means there's something flying about a high altitude. You know it has been verified, right? People have taken photos and worked out how high the ISS would have to be in order to get those photos. And not only have they worked out how high the ISS would have to be, they've also worked out how fast it would have to be travelling in order to get those photos. You know, Elio, it's not too late to change your mind. You don't have to continue with the silly charade pantomime tosh. You could actually accept what is demonstrably true for once, though 
I feel like he isn't going to do that. Anyway, I think I'll leave it there. Although, I might come back to Elio later this month. We'll see. But anyway, leave a like and subscribe if you like this video. Leave a comment letting me know what you'd like to see me do for future videos. It can be quite difficult coming up with a lot of ideas. But I will see you in the next video. Between you and me, thank you for watching.